this is a taco. But also, this is a taco. Oh, that's magic on my face. Taco? Taco. Our family loves this ingenious Mexican invention, and over the past 20 years, we have eaten no less than 25,000 tacos. What you are about to see is the story of how my son Axe and I killed and ate some gangster snapperfish that were terrorizing some ocean friends of mine, got the advice of a wise young turtle to pay tribute to a small but even more gangster eel, all on our quest to hunt down the most elusive taco filling in the world so we could attempt to eat a taco taco. Hey Dad. What's up? What time is it? It's taco time. Our story begins in the waters of Kioneoyo Bay off the coast of Maui, Hawaii. I picked this spot because in a previous fishing adventure, I met a guy who had brought back 10 taco from the depths of this bay, and I figured it would be a good place to start. Visibility on the reef was poor, but Axe and I weren't about to let that stop us from catching dinner. He went straight to looking for some fish to spear, and I went straight to looking for taco. Those who know me well will tell you that my motto has always been, if you want to find a taco, you've got to think like a taco. After looking in several spots, I imagined a taco might be lurking. I spotted an old friend, a cute little reef fish named Wheelie. Now, some of you may remember Wheelie and his girlfriend Mealy from our last episode as the fish that sent us to the prophetic lobster who foretold our epic battle with this freaky edible sea monster. Before I even had time to say hello, the little guy turned to me and started shouting, help, attack, help. Something was obviously very wrong, but before I could figure out exactly what he meant by attack, I accidentally swiped my hand right across the spines of a venomous sea urchin. The spiky fellow didn't appreciate being slapped, whether by accident or not, and promptly shot a venomous spine right through my puny glove and into my finger. Oh, that hurt. Fortunately, I'd brought my multi-tool along and quickly got to work on some underwater surgery. The Hawaiian name for the venomous creature that stuck me is Vana. The English pronunciation of this name would be Wana, and this is no coincidence, as the pain their spines cause makes you wanna go home and cry. You have to get it out! Oh, it might be poisonous! But now was not the time to go home and cry. My friend Wheelie, whose name I just realized should be pronounced Veely, seemed to be in big trouble. I removed the urchin's spine as best I could, let X know that I was going to live despite my injuries, and dove back down to find out what was going on. As I approached the spot where I had met Veely earlier, I began to see signs that something was indeed very wrong. For starters, I began to hear lots of little fish voices crying and saying things like, So scary! And, They ate Uncle Keely! I found Veely and Mealy attempting to comfort some of the young ones, and I asked them what was going on. The poor fish were so fragile and distraught that it took them a good while to get the full story out. Evident Evidently, a gang of invasive blacktail snapper had moved into his cousin Feely's reef home up north and were eating some of Feely's extended family members. Some had barely escaped by the slime of their finny fin fins and were hiding out here with Feely and Mealy. Feely begged Axe and I to do something about the situation, and I felt so bad for my little fishy friend that I promised him we would. I guess taco hunting would have to wait for now. I went straight off to look for Axe and found him spearing a new type of tasty looking fish. Nice, that is a good sign. I explained the dire situation Vili's family was in, and he agreed that something had to be done. We both exited the water and drove home to rest up and prepare for the next day's snapper battle. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. The next morning was Axe's 14th birthday, so we started the day off by feeding our chickies and opening presents. Snacks. Cool. Oh. Um... Oh, no, it's not. It's <laughs> Yay, thank you. After presents, we went to fuel up at a special breakfast spot that lets you design and cook your own pancakes right on the table in front of you. It looks like a ghost, not a First, we made a freaky taco ghost pancake. Do what you're about to do. And then along came Creepy Bear. Creepy you might bear. think you're gonna eat Creepy Bear, but Creepy Bear eats you. Fortunately, we survived the wrath of Creepy Bear and headed out to the shore of the reef that was supposedly under attack. Upon arriving, we immediately stumbled on this rare and endangered Hawaiian monk seal and a male ghost crab hiding out in his sandy hole. 
I tried to get some information about the infamous snapper gang out of Ghosty, but the only reply I got was curses and threats to pinch me and my entire family in our sleep. Axe found this to be disturbingly hilarious, and when I set the angry crustacean down, he scuttled off as fast as his eight legs could carry him and yelled obscenities until a wave took him. Hopefully he wasn't going to warn our enemies. We then came upon a fisherman who warned us that there was a tiger shark in the water where we were about to dive. So how far did you say the shark was? 80 to 100 feet deep. Okay. Fortunately, the shark was a good deal deeper than we were likely to go on the reef, and we headed out into the surf. As soon as we reached the first coral formation, I began to sense a great disturbance in the water. Everything seemed tense, and there were almost no fish about. I asked the few fish that I saw where I could find Beely's cousin, Feely but they all just turned their tails and swam away. It was a kindly old collector urchin that finally pointed me in the direction of Feely's home. I thanked him for his bravery and headed straight over. When I arrived at Feely's house, he wasn't there, but after waiting a moment or two, a female rash showed up by the back door. She was crying, and when I asked her what was wrong, she told me she was worried about her husband who was off fighting a gang of blacktail snapper. I told her to keep a stiff upper fin, and the axe and I were there to help. Her mood quickly changed from sadness to joy, and she led us off to the battlefield. Along the way, she explained to us that the snapper, who are known by the locals as Tawau, were very sneaky and liked to attack in groups. She took us as far as she dared, wished us good luck, and swam off to safety. At that moment, I suddenly realized that I had somehow lost track of Axe. Was he okay? Had the Tawau gotten to him? I had assumed that he was following me to the battlefield, but now I couldn't find him anywhere. And then I saw them, a gang of at least six Tawau slinking around on the rocks beneath me. I dove down to intercept the enemy and kicked up a sand bomb to disorient and confuse them. The tactic seemed to work for a moment, but when I advanced, they disappeared back into the reef. I stealthily tracked them from rock to rock until I finally caught up with the whole gang. Then the battle began. So, as you just now saw, Axe showed up in the nick of time to turn the tide of the battle. Seeing two of their comrades strung up for birthday dinner was quite enough for the snapper bullies, and they all turned tail and vacated the reef. I went looking for Feely to tell him the good news and found him anxiously darting about the coral. When I told him of his vanquished foes, he thanked us and swam off to spread the word that the reef was back to its balance of power. With the reef free from the reign of the Tawau, I decided to stick around for a while and do a little taco hunting. But, after poking around a bit in what I thought might be taco homes and taking a pathetic shot at a tasty looking veke, I decided to cut my losses and save my taco hunt for another day. I had just started back to find Axe when something incredibly strange happened. I was swimming up and over a reef formation when I came upon a Honu resting in the sand. I must have startled the creature because it quickly began to swim away and as it did, it spoke to me these words. You have done well. Well, do not blame the Toao. Seek the He'e in Namalu. Goodbye. What did Random Turtle Dune mean, don't blame the Toao? And what in the deep blue sea was a He'e or a Namalu? At the time, I hadn't the faintest idea how to answer these questions, but the experience was so eerily similar to one I had had recently with a certain prophetic lobster whose butt fell off that I couldn't help but suspect that these two words were going to be a very important part of my future. I resumed looking for Axe and found him with a big triggerfish at the end of his spear. Wow, that's huge. Oh, you got to ride the skull. Thanks. He told me he'd seen a squirrel fish hiding out nearby, so I sniffed it out and stuck it for dinner. Oh, it's huge! After that, we pulled up anchor and headed back to pick up our catch. Hey, monkey! <laughs> These fish. What are they? Twelve. Face a snapper. 
That's a trigger fish. Look how big that, big that squirrel fish is. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Oh, this snapper looks good. That's a lot of fillets. Back at home, Chef Axe expertly cooked up his birthday dinner, and we all shared in the delicious meal. Oh, that looks delicious. Well nice work, Axe. Give me five. We have to get a bunch more. Isn't we that have good? To. This is the best fish I've isn't ever that, had. Isn't that amazing? All that birthday fish worked up our appetite for birthday chicken, and we decided something had to be done about it. This is strange. <laughs> what, what the heck? It's head stays in the same place. I am in a tree, and I caught a rooster. Oh, oh. Hey, you got it? Yeah. There's a hen right there. I think we're good. We got we got two roosters, and oh! Whoa! Almost fell. Oh. And three, two yum, yum, roosters, yum, yum, yum. a hen in the middle. Those look like feet. They are feet. You too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After completing our pot of stinky chicken soup, it was brushed teeth, off to bed, and lights out for the both of us. As I slept, I began to drift into a strange land of dreams, riddled with fortune-telling sea turtles, and all the while hearing those mysterious words over and over and over in my mind. I woke up in a sweat and decided it was time for some late night investigation. Turns out it wasn't the Tawau's fault. They were brought to Hawaii by humans in the 1950s from French Polynesia as a potential food source. He'e is the Hawaiian name for taco, which is the Japanese name for octopus, a small fact that I have conveniently failed to mention so far, and Namalu is a beautiful bay off the northwestern coast of Maui. Bingo. Now I knew exactly where I was going to get my taco taco ingredients. The next morning, I woke to find my breakfast in a most unlikely place. This girl's laying eggs in our Legos. That's gotta be uncomfortable. Thank you very much. After eating our Lego chicken eggs, Axe and I headed off to Namalu with our gear and found, to our great delight, that we had the entire bay all to ourselves. We get this whole bay to ourselves. There is no one in sight. That's our spot right there. Here's me setting up the camera so I can run back and get a cool shot of me and Axe walking up the shore. Well, I think this is going to be like one of the best beer fishing days. We had just started to get our gear set up when Axe got skewered. Oh. Ouch. Look at how far in it went. That's all blood. After his near-death experience, Axe hit the water and immediately speared a trumpet fish. Amazing spot. Nice. Tons of black tang, huge. Okay. I saw some manini. Sweet. Next, I fend up to join Axe in the water and got straight to looking for taco. The conditions at this bay were pristine. Crystal clear water and beautiful fish everywhere. I scoured the bay and poked around in what I imagined might be taco holes for hours, but despite my gorgeous surroundings, caught sight of not so much as a tiny tentacle. I was starting to lose hope and had come up for a breath when who should I bump into again but random turtle dude. He seemingly appeared out of nowhere, swam right up to me, and spoke these words. A fish for your wish. A sacrifice paid. The tiny terror will come to your aid. In the words of my youngest son, Cedar, what the guy? Confused but grateful, I thanked Random Turtle Dude and blessed him with shockets. As I continued my hunt, I pondered the riddle I'd been given. Who was this tiny terror? And what did he mean by sacrifice? So many questions, and I needed answers. I decided to start asking around. First I asked this pair of Kihiki for help, but all they seemed to be interested in was arguing over whose stripes were the coolest. Next I asked this yellow tang, but at the mention of tiny terror, it turned tail and swam away. In fact, the phrase Tiny Terror seemed to scare away any fish I approached. Finally, after being cursed at for the umpteenth time by a venom-spewing urchin, I came upon a brave little cleaner wrasse that was willing to talk. Evidently, the Tiny Terror was a small moray eel living in the bay that had a particularly nasty and fearless reputation amongst the local reef dwellers. Excited to have a solid lead, I headed off in search of an eel. The first one I came upon didn't look tiny at all, and when I approached it, it quickly hid itself in a coral structure. Since this eel didn't check the box of tiny or fearless, I continued my search. 
Fortunately, I have developed a sharp eye for eels while diving, and it wasn't long until I spotted another one. I dove down to check it out and immediately knew by the bold look in his eye that I'd found my tiny terror. I asked him if he knew where I could get a he'e, and he responded to me with a blatant demand. First, you bring fish. Ah, so that's what he meant by sacrifice. Hey, Axe. Can I use a little piece of your fish to feed the eel to get some information about the octopus? Okay, thank you. Uh, your chop of fish. Just a little piece of it. I know. Thank you. Fortunately for Axe, eels are in no way picky eaters, and I knew the tail of its trumpet fish would do just fine. I sliced it off and headed back down to the tiny terror. The little monster swallowed my sacrifice whole and then began to speak. Hey, hey eat messy. Follow leftovers. Goodbye. What? That's it? That's all I get for my sacrifice? Had I just gotten pranked by an eel and a turtle? <sighs> See if I ever give you some fish again. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Frustrated and at a loss, I decided to forget the whole thing and join Axe on a Mimpachi hunt. I lined up for my first shot and missed. I was creeping up for shot number two when something strange caught my eye. On the seafloor below, I saw what appeared to be a cluster of fresh crab and clam shells. How odd. I quickly dove down to investigate and found that my eyes had not deceived me. There were indeed what appeared to be a good deal of leftovers from a messy eater. Wait just one salty minute. Crabs and clams are a big part of Taco's diet. That slimy slinker was right. I searched the immediate area and quickly came up with more messy mealtime evidence. And then I saw it. Poking out from a rock near my buoy anchor, the unmistakable form of an octopus. Axel, Axel, octopus, 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 right here. It's right there. Don't shoot it. Don't shoot it, okay? We're gonna catch it, okay? I was beyond excited. And yet, though the idea of a taco taco still sounded delicious, I was surprised to find the feeling I had inside now was more that of curiosity than hunger. I wanted to take my time to study this animal a bit before eating it in a crispy shell. For this, I set up a taco cam just outside its hiding place, and what you are about to witness, in my mind at least, is nothing short of the work of a grand magician. Incredibly, as the taco emerged from its hiding place, it systematically changed its coloring to almost perfectly match the backdrop of rocks, shadow, and sand. And then, like a living LCD screen, it flashed a rolling color slide straight across its skin. The magic show lasted for a full four minutes, and for its last trick, it launched away in a puff of sand. Hoping to get a second viewing of this rare magic show, I followed the creature to its next hiding spot, set up the taco cam, and once again, our little magician did not disappoint. As the taco jetted away for the second time, I suddenly realized that now might just be my last opportunity to catch this eight-legged lacalon. <sighs> that now might just be my last opportunity to catch this eight-legged lacalon. That now might just be my last opportunity to catch this la. To catch this eight-legged leprechaun. Blue.
that now might just be my last opportunity to catch this eight-legged leprechaun. Say that ten times fast. Eight-legged leprechaun, eight-legged leprechaun, eight-legged leprechaun, eight-legged leprechaun, eight-legged leprechaun, eight-legged leprechaun. My primitive instinct took over, and I dove after my prey. Hey, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. It's okay. Yet. I wasn't going to hurt it yet. Look, at this point, you've probably noticed that I've developed a bit of a bias for this octopus. So, we'll see what happens. It's okay. Don't bite me. Don't bite me, okay? Hey, hey, don't bite, don't bite. Axel! Octopus! Help! Isn't that cool? Okay, I'm trying to... Okay. All right. Okay. So, I did it. I captured me a taco, and I had it safely tucked away in a polymesh prison. But, to be honest, I wasn't quite sure what my next right step was here. It was becoming more and more difficult for me to imagine this incredible creature fried up and laid down in the middle of a soft, warm tortilla. At the thought of food, however, one of my next right steps suddenly became very clear, and I headed off to take care of some unfinished business. You see, the advice I'd been given by the Tiny Terror was exactly the information I needed after all, and a well-earned token of gratitude was in order. With my debts paid and a taco in the literal bag, we took to the surface to discuss these matters of life and death over a power mango. You got rest. I don't know, I'm having a hard time though. After all this, I'm just like, it's such an incredible creature. It's just the thought of killing it is so, it's uh, difficult for me. You know? I think so. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Comment down below. Should we eat this taco? Or should we let it free? What do you think? This is a lychee. Mm. And it tastes oh so righty. I could eat them all day at night. -y. If you try to take mine, we're getting in a fight. -y. So, our power mango discussion had helped me discover the following two things. One, sea turtles are a tough crowd for corny jokes. And two, deep, deep down inside, Axe was a stone-cold taco killer. Since neither of these facts were particularly helpful to me in making this life or death decision, I defaulted to my next, next right step. A step that is absolutely crucial for any semi-successful YouTuber. The getting of the thumbnail. Oh my gosh! Oh. It's going back! Ah. Oh! It's latching on my face! Oh! It's got your arm! It's so historical! Oh my gosh! Alright, let go! You let go!
Now, whoever said you can't do two things at once never spent any serious time raising multiple children. I can honestly say that I tried as hard as I could to recapture the eight-legged leprechaun, while at the same time, deep in my soul, I was loudly cheering it on. In the end, our attempts failed. Live long and prosper, magical one. You've earned it. So I'd lost my one and only first taco, and yet for this, I was immensely grateful. I just went up here to listen to some awesome music, and Axe just told me that he got two pachis. Right as I was getting out, I was like, oh, I'm in pocket, and I shot it. No way. <laughs> you got them in your pocket. But it won't, it won't it come out. It won't come out because of the scales. It's a pocket monster. It's scaling it. <laughs> Oh, that's a good size. Hey now. Mm -hmm. Man, I am so proud of you, Axe. Look like, at that. Guess we should fry these up. I'm excited. I'm excited too. See how these taste. Ow! Stop poking me. <laughs> we lost our taco, but Axe saved the day and he got a bimpachi here. So honestly, Axe, I gotta be honest with you. Hard. A part of me was like, well, I don't really mind that much of that taco gets away <laughs> because it's almost like I just I don't know it's such an incredible creature I didn't want my first experience with one to be me killing it you know <laughs> I just didn't you know and so I'm kind of glad Look it got away next just... time though next time Yum. I'm gonna eat me some taco look at that eyeball see how big that is it's so big Sax <laughs> our buddy's still here taking a nap <laughs> He's keeping one eye on us, that's for sure. He's like, I don't trust y'all. <laughs> now, if you think this video is just going to end like this, with no Taco Taco, you would be wrong. You see, it's been a whole five months since that fateful day, and while I've personally eaten nearly 500 tacos, not one of them has been a Taco Taco. But that, my fellow agents of adventure, is about to change. Here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Tamashiro Market. Alright. That is beautiful. Oh, I got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can we eat that? <laughs> they were holding a taco for me. You know? Tex. Uh. Oh, 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 nice. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> so big. Is that the office? Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Wait, Tessa. No wrap. Oh, giant. Oh my. Wow. That is huge. Look at that. That's like three feet long. This tentacle is cut. Our eyes are like. Oh, I like that. Mmm, that is good. Very good. All right, so what do you got going on here? Just octopus. You're just having taco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> taco, taco. <laughs> Let's see how it tastes. It's like an eight. It's like an eight? Mm -hmm. You really like it that much? Taco, 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 taco.